Automotive's uh, store. <laughs> this is our automotive store. And these ladies help our students to get organized, which they're not organized normally. Even, even as they get more mature, third and fourth year, they don't know what to ask for. They don't know what they're doing with when they get it. These girls help them get organized. They have reference material for them to draw from. But this is going away. Most of our reference material is online now. This is old school. We used to have racks and racks of books, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of manuals. But we're away from that now. We're all online. And uh, Caroline keeps everybody honest. More or less. I am actually doing something this is, down here. This is, a, this is a gentleman from South Carolina. Oh, dear. Carolina. Oh, dear. It's one man. It's one man. <laughs> how, how do you like our uh, first impressions? Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Caroline. Jake Payne. Hi. Glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm great. I'm, I'm hosting. Awesome. Good name. I named my son. Okay. When our students need, need tools or they need specialty tools or, or we just want to get them out of our hair, we send them to Chris and Caroline. And they go away for now because too many questions and they help them and get organized. And then they'll often need tools, specialty tools. They'll come here. They'll take chits. They'll hand them a chit. Yeah, there's different chits for a different. Yeah, there's a, there's a typical chit. Each one of these, they could get a scan tool for it, you know, a $5,000 scan tool, whatever, and they, students will now be able to come out to the shop and, and work. Um, now, uh, when, let's go over to the next year. So, maybe you want to pan around here. All these vehicles are, are donated to us by the different manufacturers. Every vehicle has a built-in mechanical fault and a built-in electrical fault, or faults, uh, plural, that our students are assigned tasks in real time, in real life, in real conditions to diagnose and to assess and to report on, but not to repair. Okay, we want to know their process of diagnostics. And as it fails or as it passes, we correct or we uh, congratulate and we move them from vehicle to vehicle. Some are really, really hard. Some are not that hard. And um, uh, they go from the extreme range where we've taken an engine out and we've taken a piston and we've ground it on a grinder so we lost the cam grind so it slaps. We've taken some with a connecting rod. We've ground the connecting rod so it's got 22 thousands of clearance so it's banging. So they can actually hear what a, a double tap rod noise is yeah. or a, a, a piston slap noise is under load and under load and and at and, idle and at idle they check oil pressure they check vacuum they scan it they will listen to it with their scopes or with just a tube listening to where the noise is is it at low rpm at high rpm this is a, this is a very hard program they they have to know cuz there's no point in talking about it they have to be able to do it but they have to make a connection from knowing to doing and be accurate pretty much 100% or else it's not any good to anyone. Yeah. Right? Can you give us an example of a electrical problem that you might put into a car for okay. them to solve? Uh, electrical problem that we've put into a car. Here's a good one. Perhaps the one where you... Pontiac G6. Pontiac G6 is a folding hard top. And uh, the folding hard top, if the, if the students or the customers are not familiar with it, it will not allow the hard top to fold into the trunk. And it will just stop. And it will, it will act like a fuse or relay is not active, engaged. But in the trunk, there is a special sensor device for a luggage compartment. So that if somebody has luggage in there or um, uh, groceries or anything there, and, and that uh, that it would prevent the hard top from folding yeah, into place, it will stop. And uh, the students will get all crazy. They'll start checking fuses, start checking relays. But what they should be checking is the basics. Do you know the car? Do you know the car has a, a protection device to prevent the hard top from folding under the trunk and stopping to crush something and damaging the, the trunk, uh, the roof, and so on? And so. Obviously, they all look kind of dumb when they go to start checking it out and spend an hour online. They think, oh, all I needed to do is move this luggage and the top falls fine. But they're not familiar with it, right? So that's one typical example. We, we built that in. Uh, we built uh, uh, an issue in that would exasperate them, that would frustrate them. And uh, 
there there is many other things that we have, uh, like the uh, the the new Malibu um, we have here. We have some electrical shorts that um, blow fuses continually. So uh, in this particular case, uh, we have a couple mechanical faults on it. We've actually taken the exhaust out. We've put a valve in front of the torque converter, and we've closed off the exhaust, and it will go into a no-start condition. If the catalytic, if the cat is plugged, completely plugged, the engine won't start. It will, and it will not start. So we go underneath and we just open the valve a quarter of a turn. All of a sudden, it starts. But we're training them on back pressure uh, gauges. We're training them vacuum gauges, and if they aren't with it and pick up on it, your vacuum, your your back pressure is is crazy high. What's going on? What could be wrong? You know, and so we build these things in and. We have lots of fun for three days because uh, students really see real time, real, real problems, yeah. real issues, and it's um, and it's good. Um, we have every kind of vehicle here. We have the Dodge Hemi Charger. We have the Grand Am. The Hemi Charger. We've we've taken off a couple. We've taken off a push rod. We just took a push rod out. So it's okay. Tell us it's wrong. We've Hyundai, uh, Ford Windstar. Two cylinders are offline. We took two valves and we ground them, put them back in, act like burnt cylinders. Uh, Optra, Chevy, and uh, the Cavalier. Believe it or not, the the Optra Chevy, they have an oil pressure problem. An oil pressure problem is by putting a generic oil filter on rather than OEM. It's so the OEM uh, has good pressure. But if you put a generic one on, like a Fram or an AC or Canadian Tire or anything like that, the oil pressure drops off noticeably, about 20, foot pound, uh, 20 pounds of pressure. And all of a sudden we have low oil pressure, we have upper valve train noises, and they're going, what? And it all comes down to a TSB, technical service bulletin, do you have the right oil pressure, or the oil, oil filter on the, on the car? And the students are going, are you kidding me? We use this kind of filter all the time. I says, well, not anymore you don't, because the technology is changing. Over here we have CHOP 4, which is automatic transmission. 